All right, good evening, everyone. This is Dr. Bill's World Bible School, and welcome to tonight's show. Um, uh, let me get this all set here. Okay. Uh, so we're glad to have everybody. Um, and if you watch the pre-show announcement, you know that Apostle Daniel Williams is my guest tonight. And we're looking forward to a great discussion this evening as we uh, talk about our God-given identity. Uh, so, Apostle Dan Daniel, welcome back to the show. Uh, if you'd like to just greet the audience and just tell us a little bit about what's going on in life and ministry, that'll work. Well, I'm always happy to be on. I, I believe we're living in the, the greatest time that we've ever, that we ever could be alive in. Mm -hmm. And I know the Lord's got us here right now. You're not born at this time by accident, and neither am I. And uh, we're stepping into a world of, uh, I should say, revelation. Our eyes are being opened to uh, some things that we never considered before because we didn't know, we really didn't know it was in the Word. So mm -hmm. I, I'm grateful, and I've been relearning a few things, and uh, I, uh, I I don't throw the baby out with the bathwater. No, so sir. there's a lot of things that I've learned that have brought me here that somehow plug into the, the whole scenario that the Lord is putting together. But there is some new things to us that are becoming so real, and I, I'm grateful to uh, Bishop Bill and his ministry on here and the Bible school and what he what he's doing, what the Lord is doing through him, is it's an honor to be a part of this. And uh, I, I embrace the new, and like I said, I haven't thrown out everything, but I embrace the new, and I know the Lord is bringing balance in the body, and uh, I, I'm honored to be here. Thank you, sir. You are most welcome, and uh, it's it's my honor to have you. Uh, and I'll just make it again public to uh, the world that uh, that's watching that uh, Apostle Daniel. I had a, a, a an op the opportunity a few weeks ago, a couple of weeks ago, to consecrate him as an apostle in our ministry. And uh, so, you know, when I say that I'm the one that's honored here, uh, I really mean that with all of my heart. So. Uh, tonight we are talking about our God-given imagination. Now, there's a lot of things I could say, a lot of things I have addressed concerning this, but what I'd like to do is just have you take this and just tell us tonight, what is this really saying to you when you talk about our God-given imagination? Well, to me, I, I mean, it, it's real and valuable to me because I... We're created in the very likeness and the image of our Father God. And you, you, I, everywhere when I read the word and I see the creation story and Genesis and throughout the scripture, mm -hmm. uh, there's no doubt you see that the Father had, uh, has an imagination. This all came out of him. Everything that we see, and there are things we don't, we're, we don't see yet. Yes. Because we, you know, we're living in the natural world. And we are spirit beings that haven't fully transitioned uh, to see everything in, uh, uh, as far as the realm of the spirit goes. But the Father has this, had this, and does have this incredible imagination that all of this stuff was really in him. And then he released it and brought it into visibility. And uh, I see the power of that. And as, as children growing up, you, you'll notice that when you were a child, just think about it. I, I think about this bishop uh, probably more now than I have. This has become more real to me. When, when you were a child, you had this incredible imagination. Right. I mean, I, could, uh, I lived uh, kind of in a place where I was pretty much by myself. I didn't have a lot of friends around me. But I had a huge backyard, and it was uh, like, um, I don't know, 
it, they was sand, but it was uh, it was beautiful. It was just a nice place to play. I could imagine myself flying. I could imagine all these things that kids could do and occupy my time, and just it was wonderful. But somehow in life, as as you get a little older and you get busy and you get caught up in trying to make it uh, from one day to the next, and you know have a family and yeah, a career and, and have a nice house and all those things that people strive for, that imagination seems to kind of fall by the wayside. And you hear statements like, you know, have a reality check, Bishop. You need to be real about these things, you know. You need, you need to, and it, it somehow it just kind of, it, it, it um, causes you to, to lose part of that. And even wow. Jesus said, the kingdom of God, you receive it, and I like to put it this way, you really realize it and you see it uh, be, uh, like a child, you know, it, you, you, literally, that's so valuable, and the Lord said that, that you will inherit, you will, you will be able to understand, you'll be able to perceive these things uh, if you have a childlike way of receiving. So I, I believe the Lord literally, in a sense, is restoring that to us uh, so that we can see what's on the inside. And you'd be amazed uh, how, how that will happen with you. But I'll, I'll pass it over to you, Bishop. Well, you know, um, it's, it's really wonderful that we're talking about this because uh, the, the truth is uh, I, I have studied a great deal on uh, and pondered where did we come from? Um, how did this all come into play? And I hear a lot of teachings, and, and I don't necessarily disagree with them, uh, but at the same time, I, I'm a person who has to find my own path. Uh, I, I have to know, uh, if somebody says this is the way it is, then, then I have to know that this is really the heart of God um, it, concerning it. And so, uh, for me to, to think about creation, uh, I, as as we have talked before, I believe that that thousands upon thousands and thousands of years ago, we were created as spirit beings uh, out of the imagination or out of the mind of our father. And uh, and then to follow that up at some point, whether uh, whether the Lord predestinated us to come here to manifest as visible or whether we desired that uh, as one with the cloud of witnesses. Um, e either way, I'm good with it. Uh, and so nonetheless, I end up here. Uh, all of us, we in this earth realm, be, we, we have certain values. Uh, some of those values are not aligned with the heart of God, such as uh, we've read the, the 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 great influencer, the King James, uh, that we're gonna we got like Job said, we we live a little while, our days are gonna be full of trouble, and then we're gonna die. And so we adopt that mindset. Uh, but if you really think about it, if you could look into the imagination of Father God, would that be how He sees things? And I would have to say, absolutely not. Uh, that, because that was never a scripture that belonged in the Bible uh, for anybody to think that this is a thus saith God moment. This was Job speaking out of his misery. And you'll find that a few times in scripture in, in various places. Now, uh, I will say this, that to think about God having an imagination, um, it, it's pretty amazing. Uh, you had uh, said uh, that imagination uh, that the root word is image. And so the image of our creator was implanted. It, it's like the, the thumbprint of God being implanted within our DNA. It's really not our DNA, it's God DNA. And it's like, and I keep saying Jeremiah, but it's actually Isaiah that talks about that we were birthed forth from the womb of God in the Hebrew language. And if that's the case, then I was born, I was created, I was birthed, I was uh, 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 genos is the uh, Greek word, uh, out of the womb of God. And so whether I uh, was born from my mother or not is immaterial, because actually what my mother's womb became was the portal in which the spirit realm projected this image that is on camera tonight. 
And, and so I love the fact that I'm here for a reason, and that is to reflect God, to be a reflection of the full expression of God. Now, when I think about that, Apostle Daniel, here's, here's where I'm at. I think about does God really project, if I'm projecting God, do, should my days be full of trouble? Not at all. Uh, should I be planning for and expecting death at some point? Not at all. Uh, I should be living life in the fullest measure. Um, I, I put this quote from, um, well, it goes like this. When imagination and excitement are mixed together, you will either not notice obstacles or they will be largely diminished and therefore your courage and will increase. This is important to remember as you pursue your God-given purpose. This was from way back with, from Focus on the Family. And so I, I think it's very, very important that we understand there is something working in us that's trying to get out. It's trying to be projected to other people, and that is the very image of God. Amen. Amen. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to grab a scripture that we, I know you have it on there. You posted it. Uh, from Ephesians 3, uh, verse 20, mm -hmm. the, Passion, the Passion Translation. I really love this. I'm going to try to read it real slow uh, so I don't miss some of this. But it says, never doubt God's mighty power to work in you mm -hmm. and accomplish all this. Uh, he will achieve infinitely more than your greatest request, uh, your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination. I love that. He will outdo them all for his miraculous power uh, consistently energizes you. And, and that, that I, I just want to rest in the, those uh, four words here. Exceed your wildest imagination. Yes. I want to think about that. Exceed your wildest imagination. I mean, it, that would make you want to think a little bit about imagination, that statement, because he wants to exceed that. He wants to do exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think. But imagination is part of the process. The right image that you have of yourself in Christ is absolutely vitally important. If you do not see yourself the way he sees you, you can never be what he said uh, you are. If you, be, if you always see yourself as less, then you will always be less than what he's created you to be. Yes. So, so your, your imagination is really, it's kind of like the womb of, of what the Lord wants to do in you and through you. It's, it is the womb where, where uh, invention, where dreams, where vision, where anything that is uh, achievable according to the word of God, which is exceeding abundantly above all that you can ask or think, has to, has to be. You, you've got, it, well, we're told in the word, we're to meditate in his word day and night. What for? It's not like a law and you have to do this because it's rigorous and hard. It's because he wants you to see something different for your future. And yes. a lot, that's why I talked about children and how it was when I was a child. Bishop, I, you know, I have such a carefree, doesn't matter the environment, whether we had something or didn't have nothing, whether we drove an old car that was tied together with bailing wire, you know, it, it didn't matter about all that stuff because as a child, uh, my, my imagination had not been tainted or wounded at that point. So therefore I could, I could just enjoy everything at a, at a heightened level. So that is it, Needless to say, I guess there is a need to say it, is that, that if we don't protect or get our imagination lined up with what the Lord has to you, you will have. Okay, I just lost Apostle Daniel, and uh, I'm sure it was a phone interruption that happens with cell phones. Um, but I also know he'll be right back. Um, so 
Uh, yeah, so it's very important that we understand our God-given imagination and that that he exceeds our wildest imagination. In other words, the thing that God has done in us always exceeds our expectations and exceeds everything that we have ever done, uh, we've ever attempted to accomplish. And uh, I think that's really important for us to realize that, you know, you know, there's a scripture, I think it's in uh, Proverbs, uh, yeah, Proverbs 8, verse 12, uh, and this is the King James uh, Bible, it says, I, uh, I, wisdom, dwell with prudence, and find out of knowledge of witty inventions. Um, I think that Father intended for us to, uh, to have uh, witty inventions. And um, so, yeah. All right, let me get Apostle Daniel back on here. And, um, but I, I think it's really important. Uh, it, it should be that we're the ones who are, are doing the things that, um, you know, no one else should be doing. It, it should be believers. So, um, glad you're back, sir. Yes, I got kicked off. That uh, same gentleman uh, kicked me off. No problem. So here, here I am. But anyway, I, I was talking about the imagination as a as a child. And how wonderful that was, because if your imagination is, is intact the way the Lord wants it to be, mm -hmm. you, you live a more carefree life. You're not, you're not caught up in, in uh, I like to put it this way, what you see out here and what you're dealing with in the natural, because you have the ability from the image on the inside to live a life that removes all the cares and all the worries. So one of the mm -hmm. things I wanted to get to here, Bishop, before that happened, as I, uh, what I called it, was soul fractures that happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, what, what a, fra a soul fracture, I wish that wouldn't happen, I'm sorry about the interference, but uh, a soul fracture is like, if you think of a bridge, where, uh, where the, the steel of a bridge has, um, boy, they, he, he won't stop, where the, the metal is fatigued and, and it gets weak and, the, and it's under stress all the time, that fracture is not necessarily broken at the time, but under pressure, it will, it will break, it will let you down under, you know, when extreme pressure comes on you. That's why, it's important to be whole in your imagination and in the image that the Lord has for you to see yourself as, because that, that's, that's the ground where we have our greatest battle. David said, as a man thinks, right? As a man yes. thinks in yeah. his heart, so is he. So if you're fractured in your thinking and your identity and your ability to dream and to use your imagination to, to hook up to the Father's plan for your life, if that happens to you, uh, it, it creates a lot of dynamics. And one of them is uh, where the scripture says that, that hope deferred makes the heart sick. Yeah, you, you literally be, become sick in your thinking uh, because of the, the, the time that it takes for you to get from point A to point B, if you can't keep your imagination intact and you, 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 you don't see that any longer, right. then you feel like you can't do it. Uh, right. With me, Bishop, I, I've, like you, many, many years to achieve the things that we, where we started years ago, we had an imagination, we had a dream, we had an image of something that was that was for our future, that was a good thing that the, the Father wanted us to participate and have it come forth. But it took years to get there. But was there ever a time, and I've experienced it, was there ever a time where you, your hope was deferred, where, where you felt like, I just can't do it anymore, I don't know the way out. And that, that's why I'm talking about this today, because I've reached that time in my life and I've been going through a little bit of it even right now 
because of the time that it's taken to, to see and realize these good things that the Father has for me. And, and, and then the delays and all the challenges of life. You've got to allow your imagination to reconnect to, to the image that you originally had of the Lord. Uh, that is important because he didn't change his mind, beloved. His plan for you is for hope and for a future, for an outcome that is beyond uh, your wildest imagination. And it is achievable. So that's, that's why I brought this to our attention today, Bishop. Yes, yes. And, and this, this uh, uh, thought in the Passion Translation here about wildest imagination, he goes on to say, he will outdo them all for his miraculous mm. power constantly energizes you. Uh, I was thinking as you were talking, uh, my mind went back to around 1999. It, 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 and I, I say that, I think it was actually 10 years before that, uh, 80, 88, 89. Yes, yes. Okay. So uh, when I think about that, before we started World Bible School University a little over three years ago, it was 30 years before that, that the Lord dropped in our imagination about having a Christian university. Now, of course, we didn't know the details. We didn't know the how and the where, but we got this vision for a, um, I mean, it, it just dropped in our imagination that this was a possibility, 30 years. And, and so we took, uh, uh, we took the, the building we were in, we thought about how we could add to it on top, how we could have, have a school there. We knew in our area where we were at at the time, there was a lot of Christian schools, but there was no universities. Uh, there was a, a secular university a few miles outside of town in a neighboring town, but, but no Christian universities in our town. So we got this vision and in this vision, uh, we went to uh, Oral Roberts University for the weekend and stayed in a motel across the road. And um, when we did that, we actually um, walked the campus and and just 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 inspired the vision even more. And uh, and and any in time we left that place in that town, that area, but we moved on and 30 years later, now we've had some instances where we had a school in a church, a college, and then we also worked in an online school in a third world country and did some other things. But 30 years of hanging on to the image Father put on the inside of us. You know, there's a lot of things we do that Father God uh, did not inspire. Okay, there's some stuff that was our own human imagination. And some people say, well, that's okay. It can work. Well, you know, I've had a lot of things that I was inspired about that did not actually work. Okay. When Father drops something in you and you don't let go of that, you don't let hope uh, uh, defer the hope that's in you so that your heart, your vision, your imagination becomes sick, uh, becomes tainted. And we didn't do that. But even though we didn't know when and we didn't know how, uh, it was 30 years later after moving to Joplin, Missouri, within the first year, we started World Bible School University. And here we are more than three years later with, with almost 450 students and uh, around the world. And it, it's just working. So, yes, we should never let go. Because uh, in our relationship with Father God, I think it's important to know that His creative power working within us is able. Now, it's His creative power working within us, but it becomes our creative power because we're one with our our father and it 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 what it does is it's able to achieve as scripture said infinitely more than your your greatest request your most unbelievable dream and exceed your wildest imagination uh, the net bible says now to him who by the power that is working within us is able to do far beyond or infinitely beyond all that we ask or think so uh, share some more about this verse before we move on, because this is so powerful. Yeah, I, I, I actually was going. <laughs> I was going to read the one in um, Genesis eleven and six, but um, oh, you're yeah, welcome I, to. I mean, wherever yeah, you want to yeah. go. 
Yeah, I'm sorry. I just, I mean, that's where my mind was heading while you were talking. So I'll do that and then I'll get right back on the other. But Genesis 11 and 6, and of course, the story is of the Tower of Babel. And I'll let you fill in some of the some of the some of the structure of that if you'd like, Bishop. But this particular verse is powerful because he says the the Lord said, Behold, these people is one, and they have all one language, and this they begin to do, and now nothing will be restrained from them that mm-hmm. they could imagine to do. Mm-hmm. Uh, Genesis eleven six. The it the here the oh, how would we put this this principle works the principle that's laid out in that verse works if your imagination and it says these were people that had the same image the same imagination they were moving in the same direction and he said that nothing would be restrained from them but they could imagine to do well, yeah. when I was thinking about that verse, it's it's with us now. That was the Tower of Babel. But the principle is there the Lord doesn't want to restrain anything from you or withhold any good thing from you that you can imagine to do uh, when you're operating in his imagination with the mind of Christ. And that's why identifying with who you are, your origin, which Bishop, you talk about that so much, I can't get away from it. But coming back to our original design that the Father designed us to be, which was a reflection of himself, Mm -hmm. uh, that that image or that imagination is for a purpose. You know, uh, uh, Paul said that we were an epistle. We are a book. We are read of men. You know, they can see what our life's all about because we have that image. We have the, the, the image of the Father, but we not only have that image, we have his, uh, his persona, his outlook, and the way he would talk, the way he would do things because we're created to be like him. We're created to imitate him. That's right. And we're told to imitate him. He said, as children imitate their fathers, we are imitate our father. You know, that takes a a good imagination, Bishop, because you have to have an image, a a true image of who he is and who you are and what your purpose is in order to walk in it. If you don't have that image, how can you be it? The Lord has told me many times, he said this way. He said, if you can see it, Mm -hmm. you can be it. Well, what was he talking about? He said, if you can see it, you have to have that image. Your imagination is what catches a hold of God's purpose for your life. What he wants you to achieve is not achieved from looking on the outside. The kingdom of God is within you. What he wants you to achieve comes from what you have on the inside. Out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. Out of right. what is inside you is how you will live your life. So if somebody that has been went through their life being put down and then they've accepted the, the insults and you'll never amount to nothing. And mm-hmm. what makes you think that you can change the path and the course of the history that, that surrounds your life? your grandparents, their grandparents, your parents, the line that you grew up in, your family tree. Uh, how, how, what makes you think that you can excel and do something they didn't do? Well, what makes me think that, that I can do what the Lord's called me to do is the image he puts on the inside. I can't right. allow that image on the inside and the hope of seeing these things happen be per, uh, be deferred or come to the place where you become hopeless or I, I'm basically done. And that's happened to t- so many people and they've, I've known people in my own life that, that lived their lives that way and were always hopeless 
when Christ is the hope of glory, they were always hopeless because they never could see themselves any different than what their circumstances and what people said. Very important that you connect with other people that have a godly imagination that can connect with your imagination and help you on your journey. We, you see, if they've got a godly imagination and they have a right image of themselves, then they're going to have a right image of who you uh, are and what you're intended to do, what, what's going to happen with your life, and they can hook up with you and encourage you. I've heard preachers say this, and I'm sure you have, Bishop. There, uh, there's a lot of wet blankets out there. And you may have a passion and a fire to do something, but if you surround yourself with people that keep saying you can't, they'll put your fire out. So yeah. I suggest to you today, folks, find people, and this is not a put down to anybody else. You know, this is not saying God don't love uh, other people, because uh, he does. He God so loved the world right but the thing of it is you find people that are walking in the same path you're walking that that have a understanding of this and you can build on that and you can grow and and you can encourage each other to come to your full potential and what i'm going to say to you today is let your imagination let your imagine ta imagination take you where the lord wants you to go don't what is this? I'm going to say the host asked you to start. Oh, You're that good. guy is, he's not quitting. <laughs> but let your imagination take you somewhere. Let your imagination take you where the Lord has what, what he wants uh, for your life to be. I have to, when I look in the scripture, Psalms 1, uh, what is it, 139, talks about the thoughts that the father has towards us. And it's like the sand on the seashore. Can you imagine that? That the father has so many thoughts and intentions and plans for our life that he thinks toward us that it's innumerable. Can you imagine your father God thinking about you in that way? that his plans and his purposes and his thoughts and all these good things that he wants to see accomplished in you and through you, that there is no number on it. There's no cap on it. Take the limits off. Don't, don't, don't allow yourself to be limited to a, a paradigm mm -hmm. that, that has kept you from your hope and your future. Connect to the blessing of the Lord in your life and the exceeding, which it says uh, in King James, exceeding abundantly above all you can ask or think. And King right. James puts it this way, according to his power that's working in you. There's enough of the Father within you because you're one with him to produce everything that he wants to produce in you and through your life. Let your imagination take you further than you've ever been. And you're going to be surprised, folks, if you allow that to happen. Amen. Yeah. Amen. Amen. Um, you know, your, your wife is watching. She made a couple of comments. And I, I just, I'll just uh, say this about that. that uh, uh, she talks about how that, that we need to be open to Holy Spirit to show us what he wants yes. to show us. The fact is, is that everything that you are, it has already been implanted by the father in you and Holy Spirit just awakens that he shows you. Now, I, I do want to say this about the Tower of Babel, uh, just to follow up on that. I, and I think it's a, a great uh, uh, point and a great way to go here. Uh, uh, and that's this, that, that the people were of one mind. Yeah. Therefore, anything they imagine to do would would be accomplished by them now because their imagination or their intentions was ill or was out of out of uh, uh, not in line with the father's mind um that's where the language is more confused and we know all that but to step back in time to adam 
Adam actually was the founder of the Babylonian system. Adam became confused about his identity, and the word confusion uh, is the definition of the word Babylon. So Babylon means confusion. And so when you look at the Tower of Babel, uh, uh, it, it comes from the, 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 the expression to, to babble or to just speak things that in a sense, in a way, doesn't really make sense. That's what, when their languages were confused. And, and so the Tower of Babel was rightly uh, named. But their intentions for building this tower to reach to the heavens uh, was what was uh, uh, really ill-fashioned. So we need to understand that a fleshly imagination can be very off uh, from the mind of God. If we understand that you are first a spirit being, and as a spirit being, you have the imagination or the image of your father on the inside of you and everything that you and him are in harmony about. See, the people at, at the Tower of Babel became one. They were so one that nothing they imagined, they imagined would be restrained from them. Well, think about if you're that in one or in unity or in harmony with, fa with father's mind. There is nothing in your imagination that cannot be possible. You know, Apostle Daniel, I want to say this, that I, I really, you know, for years, I knew I was a pastor. That's what I thought I'd do for all the days of my life. Uh, to be in education, even though we desired to have a Christian university, uh, and that vision was dropped in, you know, way more than 30 years ago, uh, think about it, uh, that we didn't know what that would look like, how that would function. Uh, I had never conducted a university before. But we had a vision, and a vision is birthed out of a, a godly imagination. And, and so in that, here we are today, having now spent around 10 years in education, uh, getting involved in some other things. Uh, this feels like home. This feels as comfortable as back in the day that pastoring felt. And, uh, and so it, as long as you're in harmony with what Father has spoken, Nothing that you, that you have imagined will be restrained from you as long as you and Father are of the same mind. And if you're of the same mind, listen to this, you're of the same language. <laughs> Wonderful. Amen. That's so true. I, I can relate to that, too, because, oh, my, my, my. It wasn't at the very beginning, but shortly afterwards, the Lord began to share some things with me and uh i can say right now i i couldn't to begin with i couldn't hardly see that that could be possible mm -hmm. i mean I, I was receiving it i was saying okay lord that's wonderful but it it was hard to receive and accept to begin with and it took a little time to develop into it mm -hmm. I, I had it's like a like a the old Polaroid pictures, you know. Remember those old cameras? Yeah, yeah. The, you, take, you take a picture, and in, it wasn't instant, you know. Like we got our cell phones now, you can get a picture. It's yep. there, and you it's right now, you know. And you can enlarge it, you can enhance it, you can do all kinds of things to it. But it took a while for the thing to develop. That's important because mm -hmm. we are being developed into what got the origin, the original plan and purpose for our lives. And, and, and that's where the imagination, the image on the inside has to be the right one. And when the image on the inside is the right one, whether you see it immediately or not, like the Polaroid picture, it will develop into what it, it was intended to be. Right. So each one of us, the Lord has stamped us as his as believers. He's as, he's stamped us with an image to reflect his character and every facet of his character. Jesus said, when you see me, you see the father. He was the express image of his person. And we are created to express his image in our life. But when the imagination and the image on the inside isn't the one that 
that the Lord wants us to, you know, to, to, to put our mind on and, and wrap our thoughts around and develop into this, into what man, what will be the manifestation of, the, of what he wants to do with us. If we don't let that process happen, uh, we're not going to see the, the results that we would like that he wants for us so it's important that now I'm, i don't want to i don't want to rain on anybody's parade or hinder you in this path but it's important that you get with people that can breathe into you it's the things that produce that life that, that cause the the your Im, the image of god's intention of for you to be bring be brought before you continuously uh yeah. you surround yourself with people that that do not see the potential that's going to hinder you so what what i'm talking about is like precious faith we use that term i think i can use it here when you're around people that have like precious faith or they think very similar to each other uh, they understand uh, what I'm talking about, and they will speak into that thing. Uh, like I will say to the bishop right now, I see potential. I know the, uh, what, what he's doing to, to bring us back to our origin, back to the Christ mind, back to knowing the, the identity that was before the foundation of the world before the cosmos, that that identity is being restored to us. It's not that it wasn't, but we were not aware of it. That's where the imagination comes in. And that's why when we hear the word, when we hear the, hear, uh, the plan of God released into our lives to upgrade our understanding so that we can begin to see what he sees about us, you're going to start walking in a different dimension. I don't sure. see myself. I don't see myself the way I used to see myself, Bishop. I have moments. I have those moments, and I've come into places where I've, I have faced uh, an area where there's a fracture in my soul. I don't know how much time we got, and I don't know if I can do this justice, but a fracture where something had been not broken completely, but weakened considerably. And, and then, then put in a, 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 with uh, all things in my life, uh, different people, whatever. Uh, and then that, and the pressure would come on that fractured thing in my life. And, and you start feeling kind of hopeless when that happens. Right. And that's when you need to refresh yourself and remind yourself that you may have went through something and maybe you're in a situation where you feel like you're at the end and you can't go any far further because uh, now you're now you're being reminded of something that happened in, in your past that was that actually brought harm and hurt and in your thinking, you know, and. and and that is so that becomes real to you at the moment. It can overshadow the real true reality that the Lord has for your life. That's what I'm trying to say. It can momentarily overshadow that, and you're not seeing clearly what the what the real plan, what the what the design the Father has for you, because now because there's a fracture in your thinking. Your identity or how you identify with your circumstances uh, causes you to feel less than what the Father says about you. Right. Now, that's important, friends, because I, uh, I know we all go through those things. And when you go through it, it isn't because the Lord is, is bringing you through something to, to, to have you harmed. You are you come through things through stages of development to where those things do not trouble you anymore. Now I'm, I'm going to read a verse that goes with this and I'm not sure what kind of time with all those, all the interruptions I had, but this is, um, I've got it here. 
I'm sorry, Bishop. I've got a verse that I put on one of these that we really should read, but it's to do with um, a broken spirit and uh, that it's like a city, like, like a city broken down without walls, that, that if you have no control over your, over your own emotions and over your spirit, which your imagination will, the right image will help you do that. It's like a city broken down without walls. In other words, your protection is gone. And so that's Proverbs why- Proverbs 2518. It's 2518? Proverbs, yeah. Yeah. Or in my, I've got it says uh, 2528. So maybe there's two. He that has no I rule- I'm sorry. He that has no rule over his own spirit is yes. like a city broken down and without walls. You know, <laughs> that that is a powerful thing. And the the things in your life that the Lord is developing in you with the right identity uh, will cause you to have to have rule to to reign over those negative things. And let the image of God, let that imagination come back to life in you that, you know, the plan hasn't changed. Have you ever come to that place where you thought, well, maybe, maybe the plan has changed. Maybe I have to, you know, take the next. Uh, instead of A, I've got to take B because A is right. not working. There isn't not, there's not a B plan. There's an A plan. The, the, plan of God never, never changes for your life. His plan for you is, is stays and remains consistent because he's exalted his plan and his word above all those other things in your life. But we cannot allow the enemy, uh, those things that come against our mind to cause us to, to, to allow our hope and allow our imagination to be uh, shattered. And I've, I've faced it a few times and I thank God for people that could lift me back up and say, hey, it's not over. You've, 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 you're, you've kind of reached a crossroad and right. it looks like you're through because of these, these circumstances. And it, it seems like your city is broken down and you don't have any protection anymore. But the Lord says, no, it hasn't changed. His plan for you and his promises for you right now are yes and amen. amen. Go ahead, Bishop. Amen. Amen. Absolutely. And I told you wrong. It, it was 25, eight, uh, 28. Uh, the Passion <laughs> Translation says, if you live without restraint, you are unable to control your temper. You're mm -hmm. as helpless as a city with broken down defenses open to attack. Uh, so, uh, powerful verse. Uh, I'll tell you what, I want to at least get these quotes. We've got about uh, 10 minutes. I want to get these quotes out um, uh, before we're done. Uh, good to see everybody joining us from all over the world. We've got uh, uh, Africa. We've got South Africa. Uh, we've got uh, a, a Borneo Island, Malaysia, and, and places around the U.S. and, and people watching that I'm, uh, I, I probably have missed. But uh, anyway, uh, I, I, I've got a, uh, some more quotes. Uh, it says, imagination is the ability to see what is unseen. This is a powerful gift from God. Learning how to use your imagination correctly is vital to any Christian walk. This is by Nathan Sparks, who is a an author. And um, uh, I have another one here uh, by another uh, by someone you'll recognize, says your imagination is your preview of life's coming attractions. That's by Albert Einstein, and uh, we all know him. And uh, and then finally, uh, because I want to give time for you to, to do a closing word, um, uh, so the imagination is literally the workshop wherein are fashioned all plans created by man. Uh, I found this author on the internet, uh, Napoleon Hill. Um, so when we look at, um, you know, Ephesians 3, we looked at verse 20, but real quickly, Ephesians 19 and 20 in the New King James Version says, to, to know the, uh, the love 
of Christ, which passes knowledge, or some say beyond all, all understanding, uh, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. Now to him who is able to do exceedingly abundantly above all that we ask or think, according to the power that works within us. And I, w I wanted to get back to that because you mentioned that a little bit earlier. According to the power. See, this power is already implanted, already imparted within you at creation. And, and so it's according to this power. It's like the measure of faith. It's a definite measure. Uh, it's the faith of, the, of Christ himself. Uh, but the Greek word here for power is the Greek word dunamis. Uh, it means uh, force, miraculous power, um, uh, ability, abundance, strength, uh, uh, wonderful work. Um, and this multifaceted word is layered in its definitions. And there's a root word that this comes from, which is uh, dunamai. And it's uh, defined as to be able or possible. This is the thing about imagination. Sometimes we lose our... Um, we lose our, uh, uh, not our ability, but we, you can never lose that, but we, we lose our, our passion for the thing Father has planted in you. You can force it to come forth. I want to tell you that's not the best way to do it. Uh, we enter his rest and allow Holy Spirit to birth forth this vision that came out of the imagination of the Father. So when, when I relate to this, uh, the thing that you can imagine from the image within you is now possible to those who believe. So I think it's important to stay. See, mm -hmm. faith is not works. Faith is persuasion. See, the real definition of faith is persuasion, the thing you become persuaded of. And if you're persuaded of something, you don't have to work it up to get it to work. You just stay persuaded of it, and you rest in the Father knowing that it's like our university. 30 years later, a university births forth. Uh, you have to become persuaded that what God said is exactly what he's working on behind the scenes that you're not seeing. And I know that's true in your life, Apostle. Uh, so uh, give us a, a closing word. Just kind of tie this up, whatever your heart has to offer the people tonight. <laughs> that's, there's a lot. We had so many interruptions that really took some of, some of it away and distracted me a little bit. But the plan, like you said, Bishop, never changes. God, the Father's true intention and his heart and purpose for your life is one that was settled before you were ever born. Right. Bef yeah, it was already settled. So, and he knows his thoughts and his plans that he has for you for an expected end or an expected outcome. And that's not a bad outcome. That is a good outcome. That's right. And uh, yeah, it's all good. You know, so uh, today is, is, to me is so important just to remind you, there are many of you that are watching or will watch that, that have come to kind of like a crossroads because you've ran into situations where it doesn't look like you can go any further. It almost looks like what you believed and what you imagined and the image that you once had now, uh, now you quoted that verse about hope being deferred. It seems I, like it has been so prolonged for so long that it, there's no way that it can ever happen now. But I'm here to tell you that's not true. There ain't nothing true about that because the, it, the father is without variableness, neither shadow of turning. Mm -hmm. Every good and every perfect gift comes down from the father of lights. Well, we are the lights that, that he fathered. Hallelujah. He's the light that lights every man that comes into the earth. So he is the father of lights and his plan is perfect and it is not going to change. That's so right. I want to encourage you that he, I, I've been going through it myself a little bit lately because it has been a long time. And if you're living up north, like I did this season in the winter, there's not a lot you can do when you have snow banks and you got 20 and 30 below and you got all this stuff, you're almost stuck in your house. So there you are, you're stuck. And you, you need to, you know, you need to get out and socialize with people every now and then. But because you go through things, 
don't mean that there isn't something on the other side of it. You know, obstacles. The Lord told me this, and I'll share this with you. Obstacles are not there to stop you. They're opportunities. Yes. If you look at an obstacle that, that has come into your life that is eh, what, kind of wanting to detour you or to steal your vision or your dream, it's an opportunity for the Father to actually reflect his glory and his goodness in you and through you because the plan hasn't changed. So somebody this evening or whenever you watch this, whether it's morning, evening, or live, doesn't matter. The word is true no matter what. You're going to reconnect to the purpose that's never changed. Yeah. You're going to you're going to reconnect to the unchangeable purpose of the Father and you're going to become persuaded fully persuaded and that's part of what faith does and you have received the same spirit of faith so you're speaking in in line with what he said. You will become persuaded even through these words that it's not over everything intended for your life is still intended and available for you to do right now. So That's I'm right. looking, I'm looking forward to it. And if you're hearing me and this touches your heart, you just, you just, just lift your hands and say, Lord, father, your plan and your purpose is still the same. And I'm, I'm yielded to it. And I'm not going to allow myself to be like a city that has no protection and the walls have fallen down. But I thank you, Lord, that, that I'm going to fulfill your divine purpose and destiny for me. And just allow him to, to you talked about passion, Bishop, allow that passion to rise up in you again and reclaim what's yours. There's people gonna, in this time frame right now, you're going to reclaim the ground you thought you lost. You thought you lost it, but you didn't. You're going to reclaim that ground <laughs> because his plan is forever settled for you. Get the vision. Let, let that. One more thing. I just have to say this. Yes. If, if I say puppy, what are you going to think about puppy, right? If I say white puppy, you'll see a white puppy. If I say curly haired white puppy, and I begin to define a little dog, you're literally going to have an image inside of a little white curly haired puppy. And you can literally see it on the inside. The reason for this tonight is to 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 for you to see on the inside in your mind's eye, however you want to put it, to see inside that the original plan is real and to take a hold of it. Amen. Thank right. you, Bishop. Go ahead. You're most welcome. You're most welcome. And um, uh, yeah, I too have stuff, someone contacting me. <laughs> uh, but, um, uh, but anyway, yes, everybody listen. It's important to understand your God-given imagination. Don't lose the vision of the image Father has placed on the inside of you. Uh, it, 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 if, if you do not keep deferring the hope that is in you, and you know what hope is defined in the Greek, a confident expectation of good. That's the yes. Greek definition of hope. So it's important that you don't let go. Um, thank you, Apostle Daniel, uh, for your sharing tonight. I know that phone interruptions can be hard, but um, uh, if you'll stay on there uh, after we're done, I'll tell you how to how to deal with that. Okay. All right. So everybody, uh, listen, in the morning, we are scheduled with Apostle Brian Christian. Uh, he's having some Internet issues where they're at doing a conference with Dr. Kim him and Dr. K. Fairchild. So uh, be prepared 10 a.m. Central Standard Time in the morning and we'll go from there. Uh, if that doesn't fly, we'll do something different. But we appreciate all of you and love you. And we'll see you next time. Uh, next week on Kingdom Dynamics, uh, Pastor Irvin Reed is scheduled, and I always have a good time talking with him. So uh, we'll see everybody later. Have a great evening. We love you all. Bye-bye.